Hi, everyone. So today we're going to talk about live activities uh, with live scores at Forza Football. Uh, Forza Football is a live score app, so supposedly this feature that Apple released is perfect for us. Uh, but while we're building it, uh, we, of course, in encounter a lot of weird stuff and weird things. And today I'm going to talk about it and share with you. So let's, start, let's get started. Uh, firstly, uh, Forza Football, where are we? Uh, we are building an app called Forza Football uh, since 2012, so a bit, a bit over uh, 10 years. Uh, we have a small team around 30 people, and we are based in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden. And we have been uh, featured uh, several times on App Store, which is yeah, pretty nice. Like, but as a uh, previous talk, like, okay, Apple doesn't t tell you about it. It just suddenly happens, and then, okay, you get a huge spike, but uh, a nice surprise. Um, yep, so let's get started. Uh, the agenda today, so I will talk a little bit uh, a basic about, give a little base, basic information about how live, live activity works and how, what it is, and talk about the design, how we went, did the design, the iterations, and with the data flow, how to update it, and a lot of weird things that we have encountered during the way. So there's a lot, so let's get started. First, what is live activity? Um, and to answer this question, I can say we can, I can say, um, what is not live activity? So uh, why I want to do this? Because even uh, it was a lot of confusion with the users and even the like, team members in our team were kind of confused because there are some things that are similar to the, uh, on, on the face. So, and people get confused. The first one, uh, home screen widgets. This was introduced on iOS 14. Uh, we were also very excited when this came out since we were able to deliver more information, not just in our app, it can be, live on the home screen. Right? The user doesn't need to enter your app to use it. Uh, but we quickly found out like this is not what uh, we expected. Uh, if you have built some of this, you know it works similar to the Apple, uh, Apple Watch on the complications. So how it works, it gives you a timeline, you give the timeline, and you say, okay, at which time you showed what information. So it is very, and it refreshes only at the given time. So it's great for slow data, like uh, calendar events, weather, uh, weather forecasts, something like that. So for us, it will be match fixtures, since the fixtures rarely change. And we did try to do some hack or try to make this work, tell the system to oh, keep updating uh, if there's a match live. But most of the cases, the, sometimes it takes up to 15 minutes for, uh, to get a one refresh on this uh, home screen widget. So but it doesn't work uh, great for live scores. Um, moving on, lock screen widgets on iOS 16. We were also a little bit excited on this, but yeah, this is the basically the same uh, as the home screen widgets. It's just they live on the loft screen now. So they have the same limitation and also smaller. Um, that's what, uh, but we also tried and built some of this, so yeah, I can try it out later. Uh, so these are two most like confused ones. Uh, so there you have it. On the left one is the live activity, the real life activity that we will talk about today. And the middle one is lock screen widget, and the right one is the home screen widget. All right, so back to what is a live activity. According to Apple's definition, the place displays up-to-date information from your app, allowing for people to view the progress of events or tasks at a glance. So the two important uh, words I, I highlight here is up-to-date information and at a glance. So here are some examples that, uh, that is already live. Uh, I think many of you probably have seen it already. Uh, the left one is the Uber one. Uh, which says, tells you live information on when the cab is coming and how long you're going to arrive. The middle one is, the park, is a parking app. So when you start your parking, you pay for your parking, and it says how long you've parked. On the right one, uh, I think everyone should be sim familiar with this. It's the now playing thing that has been there since, I, was, I don't know, since the beginning. And Apple says, OK, this is now a live activity as well. So uh, OK, but yeah, it has more capabilities, but Apple says it is. Um, all right, so how does live activity work? So I guess a lot of developers like me will be like really exciting watching the keynote, like WWDC keynote every year. And we saw Apple um, announce this feature, right? Uh, and they say, OK, we have live activity now. You can have access to the lock screen. You can show information there. You have access to a dynamic island. You can send real-time update updates. This is like so nice. This is perfect for us, right? Uh, but uh, what's the catch? Like, there must be some catch, right? It's not, it's too good to be true. And quickly you find out uh, there are some limitations that Apple doesn't tell you upfront. 
the live activity cannot, um, you cannot set the live activity to be launched on a certain time. You cannot use a push notification to start a live, live activity. User has to enter your app and has to do an action to, to start the live activity. So yeah, a little bit of bummer for us that we were imagining, OK, we, if you follow this team, and then the team start playing, then a live activity should start directly, right? You shouldn't need to like, go into the app and start it. Uh, so that's a little bit bummer. Uh, secondly, the live activity cannot send any network requests. It cannot really see, receive location updates. Um, yeah, this is quite unexpected for us as well, since we want to do live updates and you cannot send network requests. How do we do that? Um, so the answer is we need to do push notifications, and uh, if your app is running in the background, then you update from there. So that's that. Uh, thirdly, live activity, the system handles it completely. So your app is un like completely unrelevant. So if the li uh, live activity is running, your app does not know, and the system has full control of it. So yeah, it also means you cannot attach the debugger to it because the system handles it. And this infers, infers also it will be hard to debug pushes. And we use push notifications to update the live activity, and you cannot attach it. So if something goes wrong, you basically do nothing. And then we're going to talk a bit more about this uh, in later slides. So let's start with the design. So here I'm uh, referring to the UI design for the looks and feels of the live activity. Uh, in design, I'm going to split it into three parts. So first is the specifications, which means uh, the rules, the rules that Apple gave us, and like the, the sizes, the update limit limitations, uh, the, the limits that we work with. And the second one is goals, is what do we want to bring to users with live activities? This is our goal. And third, the iterations. Like we've gone through a lot of iterations on trying to get uh, to a better user experience, and I'm going to show a lot of screenshots on that. So. For specific specifications where uh, live activity can appear, they can appear in three places. Uh, the first one is a lock screen. The second one is the dynamic island. And iOS 17, that was recently released, uh, you appear in the setup standby mode as well. Uh, here, and you also have to notice that if you want to do live activity someday, you have to implement all of them. Like you cannot just say, oh, I just want to be on the lock screen. I don't want to be in the dynamic island because it's too much work. No, you cannot do that. You have to support everything. Um, so, correct. Uh, here, I want to focus uh, more on the dyna dyna dynamic island, since it's more interesting. Uh, that for the dynamic island, there's several states that you need to consider. If there's only one uh, live activity is running, then you have the whole top bar to you. Uh, and this state is called compact. And your view is split into two parts. First is the leading part on the left, and the trailing part on the right. And uh, multiple apps can start multiple live activities. So if there is more than one live activity running, you will go into this state. So you will go to minimal state. You will either be in the, in the left part, in the leading part, or in the trailing part. So your, the screen estate you can use is much, much smaller in this state. And then if the user long taps it, you will expand to, to like a larger, and it will look like this. So similar to the, the one on the lock screen, on the screenshots you see before. And Live activity can switch at any time to any state because other live activity can start and end at any time. Um, and user can tap or long tap on the live activity any anytime. So you can switch between these three states anytime. Uh, so quick summary here. Uh, for dynamic island, you have very, very limited space. Uh, it's the same data, same backing data, just different layout. Uh, and these are the possibilities. Um, this is what we gathered when, from uh, Apple just when just released it, and there's not much like, documentation on it. So then we have so many questions, like because Apple didn't say like, how big can you go? Like, there's is there size restrictions? Do do system padding some part? Like, and it doesn't say if you can uh, render images, can you render gifs? Can you do animations? Or can you do actions like uh, now playing one? The now playing uh, live activity, you can play pause. Uh, can we do that? And more importantly, can we cover the system time and system uh, like the battery? Because live activity lives on the top. If you go really wide, then you cover stuff. Can we do that? Um, there's no information of that. So when we started, so of course we have to test it. Um, and these are the some tests that we did. Uh, on the left one, uh, okay, we put an image on there and put a background. Okay, it works. Uh, on the middle one, we try to put in longer text, so expand as wide as we can. 
Uh, and apparently we can, but this will cover the system time and the battery, as you can see. And on the right one, we try to see uh, when uh, it's minimized, how wide can we go, especially the background, like how wide can we go. And interesting here is the, the text is, is a bit too small, but you can see uh, on the left and right is the green background, and they are both 45 points wide, which is the maximum with uh, how wide you can go. But they, are, they look differently. On the right, it's, uh, it's clipped to a capsule, capsule shape, and on the left, it's just partially clipped. So when designing a UI, you have to think about this. Like, and you don't know which, which uh, place you are when you're running. You don't know you're, you're leading or trailing. So you will be presented differently when, you, uh, when you're in minimized state. So something to keep note of. Uh, of course, several months after uh, Apple finally uh, put this on human interface guidelines, and then you have like, very detailed values that you can reference now. So uh, this is good. Done with the specifications, uh, the goals. What do we want to do here? We want to show the most relevant information for matches, especially live matches, since we are doing live activity. So this is the most important. Uh, secondly, we don't want to be intrusive, since you will appear on user's screen. And user usually has a very, very strong preference on how their home screen or live screen want to be like. So we want to there, be there to provide information, but we don't want to be intrusive, like a pop-up ad or something like that. Uh, Thirdly, we want to reflect existing styles because we want to, uh, of course, we want the users to know, okay, you are using Forza Football, uh, and we want users to, to know that, but we don't want to slap a logo or like put Forza Football on every screen to let users know. We want to reflect the existing styles that we have in the app, and then users are familiar with that, so they, when they look at it, they know, okay, this is by Forza Football. This is the familiar uh, layout or the in interface designs that the uh, user likes. All right, so... How do we design it? First, we look at our main views in the app. So if you haven't used our app before, this is the main view of our app. Uh, we call it the calendar. This is the mo po most popular the, the screen that the user uses. On the top, uh, it's the, the calendar, so the dates. You can switch, switch between dates. And then there's a filter. You can just want to see uh, live matches or not. And then Two sections, team and competitions, which are the teams and competitions you follow. If there's a match playing today, we'll show them as higher priority over there. And below them, we'll show all the rest of the matches, uh, all the matches that are playing uh, today. And if you tap one of the matches, uh, one match is uh, re represented as a row. If you tap one of the matches, you go into a match info screen. We call it match info screen. So uh, once you go in, you have a lot more detail or information about, about the match. On the top, the header, like a beautiful header with teams playing, uh, scores, the match time, and which tournament they're playing. And below, then there's live uh, events that happens within the match. And there's some other functionalities that you can vote uh, who will win before the match. And if you swipe left or right, they'll have lineup, tables, and like statistics, a lot of detailed stuff that, uh, for the match. So, these are the two main views that uh, we have in the app. And we think that there's two good candidates we, we can uh, as use as a starting point to design our li live activity. So these two we think are pretty good uh, candidates. The left one is the match list view. So each match is uh, represented as a match row. And on the right is an like, image header that's bigger. Uh, and bigger that uh, it looks more beautiful. And so let's try it uh, to put this in our live activity. So the first try, we did a very simple um, try to put, put the match row on the live activity on lock screen. And here's a test that we did in the very, very early beta versions. You can basically start unlimited numbers of live activities. So we just put as much as we can. And you can span the whole lock screen with it. And you can scroll for like several 10 seconds and still the same live activity. Then you cannot see any of your notifications. Uh, but as so you can see, this is, uh, doesn't look great. Um, so we tried with another, uh, another view, which looks like this. All right, so already looking uh, much better. Um, but we think that uh, the background is taking too much attention or it's too compli complicated colors on the home screen. So we uh, toned down a bit. We removed the background, used a nice blur, and adjusted the latest event to be on the bottom. And yeah, this looks pretty nice. This is uh, what we have now on the last screen already. So um, this is kind of the easier part on the last screen. And here comes the fun part, which is the, the dynamic island part. Uh, so we have now the design for the lock screen. And 
we have to we want to show the same information on the live activity, which is, as we said, expanded, uh, the minimized, and the compact. And you can see the, the screen estate is much, much smaller. Uh, like we need to do some like adjustments here to, to fit everything in, right? So to recap what we have here, well, we have team playing, we have the team name, the team badges, we have the scores if the match is live, and we have the match time, which will be if the match hasn't started, it will be the kickoff time. If the match is started, then we have the match minute, and if the match finished, then it shows full time. And we have the latest match event, um, right? So uh, let's see how many revisions we've gone through. So the first one, like a very simple primitive uh, try, we just basically put our match row into the dynamic island, and uh, it works kind of okay, but not great. Um, the, there's a problem with this one uh, on the lower one that it kind of exposes the housing sensor, the sensor housing, the, where the cameras are, and Apple says that they don't like this, so yeah, that's not good, that's gonna, not gonna work. So revision two, okay, we updated a bit, you know, to, to, map, to match the uh, capsule rounded corners uh, to make it look better, uh, but this is also has a big problem that we want to show a lot of information, but in turns we cover up the time and the <laughs> battery. And for football matches, they play around two hours, so you can imagine if you have a live activity that covers users' time for two hours, uh, it's not great. So yeah, we need to get to the next revision. The third one, <clears throat> so we try to uh, shorten the width. Um, so we tried that by removing uh, the team logos and just put in scores. We thought that, okay, use, since the user has to start the live activity, start the live activity, we think that, okay, if you start the live activity, you should know which live activity it is. You know, should know which team is playing, right? So let's remove the, the team logos. And it uh, looks like this. Uh, but like, just might be using for a while, like, I have quite bad memory. So I forgot which match I started already. Um, quite a lot myself as well. And if there, you started uh, several matches, uh, they could uh, in turn show up. If the, the one has the latest event, it will show, uh, show up on top. Then you basically don't know which matches, uh, which uh, score that matches belong to. So, um, so that doesn't work great. Secondly, we, uh, the fourth region, we tried, okay, we tried something uh, extreme. So let's remove everything. Let's just show the uh, latest match events since that should be quite interesting. Uh, but yeah, then quickly we found out this doesn't work well as well, since we cannot show the time here, we cannot show, we do not know uh, how long uh, ago it happens. So for example, the red card, did it happen like on the second half, when the second half just started, or did it happen like at the 89th minute? So that makes a lot of difference, but we cannot tell here. So let's move on to the next revision. Here's another uh, layout that we tried. So. One, one side is the uh, team logos, and the other side is the score. And why do we want to do this? Because we need to consider when uh, the live activity goes to the minimal state, then you will show only one of it. Uh, so you either show um, the, uh, the team badges or the scores. Um, yeah, but yeah, quickly found out this doesn't work as well because it has the same problem as before, that you will forget like, which match it is. So, Next revision, we thought about maybe using colors. So for this example, Crystal Palace playing Leeds. Crystal Palace is using blue, and Leeds is using white uh, to indicate. So when it's on the minimal size, minimal size you, you will know which team is playing. And if it goes to compact size, which is below, you still have the colors which reference the team. So okay, now you, can, you should be easier to remember uh, which team is playing. Uh, we also tried this uh, with playing around with how we present the colors to utilize, since the uh, dy dynamic island has a rounded capsule shape, shape, and we want to use the screen asset to the, to the best, so use it to the side. Um, we also tried this one to use uh, more vibrant colors to take up uh, more intention. Um, yeah, but after a while, we think, uh, we think that this is still not great because uh, using the colors, there's uh, several problems with it uh, for bigger teams. Since we have a lot of teams in, the, in, the, in our app, 
for bigger teams, okay, we have good colors for them, but there's for smaller teams, or for example, your, your local teams, we don't have very good colors for them. Um, so this is gonna, not going to work well with, uh, with a bigger, cell, bigger scale. So we have to take another approach. Um, so we try this. This one is probably one of my favorite as well. So we use, our, use team logos, but we put them on the very edge. So we don't show it fully, but since it's the team that you follow, you should be quite familiar with it, and you know just by seeing the edge, you know which teams are playing. So this is pretty nicely presented. But there's a problem with this. On the left side, Napoli playing Ajax. Ajax is cropped in that direction because the sensing houser is there. Uh, the house, uh, sens sensors, face, the cameras are there. And this exposed the, cam the, the housing there as well, which Apple doesn't like. Apparently, like, everyone knows there's something there, but uh, you just cannot talk or show up or show it. So, uh, so yeah, this, will, this eventually didn't work. Um, here comes to, uh, our final version. So this is the <coughs> final version that we choose. Uh, this is a similar layout that we have in the app, where we stack scores. And we also show the team badges in front. Uh, they are quite small. The badges are quite small, but since with the colors and shapes, even they're quite small, a user can easily recognize it. And we can show the scores. You can, in, in either size, in minimal, in compact, it's really easy to tell. And then we give up the latest match event. So if you want the latest match event, you long press it, or you go into app. So yeah, this is the final version we, we have right now. And uh, during our testing to all these revisions, we also built a UI tool. And by UI tool, unfortunately, it's not XO Preview. Uh, we wanted to use XO Preview, but uh, as many of you know, this doesn't work as well as promised. Um, it doesn't work with big projects. It's really, really slow if you have a lot of dependencies. And of course, the, all the libraries, third-party libraries that we might need to add, add because of ads or something tracking. And Xcode has a prob lot, huge problem uh, building that. So we uh, build something ourselves. So this is our internal tool that we build ourselves. Since we're testing the, at first we don't know the size limitations of the live activity, so we're testing that. And with our testing results, we build our own custom version inside the app. And it is backed by real data structure. So uh, we can see, for example, on the right, uh, right one for live activities uh, for a match. It has several states. It has pre-match, lineup, kickoff, go, go with our score, red card, and probably ten more. And uh, we can we can view uh, every state uh, on the same screen, uh, and we can also view like for same state how does it look differently? How does it look in different uh, like minimal, compact, lock screen? Uh, yeah. So this very convenient tool to do uh, quick, iter quick iterations, and if you adjust one of the layouts, it won't, you, you know that you didn't break something else. Um, there's also built in this, that we have a JSON re rep representation of the data, which uh, we'll talk about uh, in the next slide. That is very important. The data flow. So we're going to start with the data flow now. Uh, for data flow, they're split into two parts. First part is the data, which is the data structure backing the live activity. Secondly, is how the data flows, which is how we update the live activity. So let's start with defining data structure. Uh, the first one, uh, we have uh, UI design. We de decided our UI will look like this. So the data we have is team playing, scores, match time, kickoff, match minute, and match events. And these uh, data will be split into two parts. First is the static part, which means once you start the live activity, this data will not change. For the team playing, the match time, the kickoff time, it will not change when, after uh, the match has started. Uh, and how we define this, we need to call them attributes. So for attributes, we have uh, match ID, which is kickoff kick time, home, and away team. Uh, second part is the dynamic data, which will update throughout the life cycle of the live activity. So the scores, of course, the scores will update. The match uh, minutes will update. It will continue its progress in the match events. And how we define this is we call them content state. Uh, so here we have a content state, uh, which is uh, we have enum of match state. Match state is before, 
if the match has been started, live if the match has started, and after when the match is finished. And if the match is live, we have scores and we have minutes. Uh, minute is an optional string because for some matches, uh, we don't have the, the live minute. And then if the match is finished, then we just have the scores. So the data structure will look like this. Um, yep, quite simple. Uh, moving on to updating live activities. So I mentioned before, there are two ways to update it, either from your app running in the background, or secondly, from uh, remote push notifications. And as you know, for the football, it's a live score app. Uh, on iOS, only very limited apps can get uh, unlimited background runtime, like navigations or uh, like mess, uh, voice calling apps. And live score is one, not one of those. So we need to do uh, remote, push uh, no, remote push notification updates. So I'm going to focus on this one. So for uh, push notification updates, we need to prepare uh, for stuff, the payload. Uh, we need to request the push token. And then I'm going to talk about debugging, which is very interesting part. And lastly, the update frequency, which is something that we didn't expect at all. Firstly, the payload, we need to prepare it. Uh, if you work with push notifications before, this is pretty standard. You have NPS dictionary, you have alert, title, body sound. Um, this is pretty standard for push notifications. But you may be wondering, we are li updating a live activity. Why do we need to provide this uh, push notification, like this kind of stuff? Uh, it is because uh, these notifications will show up on your Apple Watch, for example, if you are not near your phone. It will show up as regular push notifications uh, with a small clock, which is the live activity icon on, the, on your watch. So we need to provide those as well. And then moving on to the live activity uh, related uh, attributes. First one is the timestamp, which uh, the, the timestamp are your event and the event that you want to update the live activity and the relevant score, which uh, the higher, if you give the no higher number, the system will put your live activity uh, on top more. And then the content state, uh, which is what we just defined before here in content state, um, the match state, and yeah, the match state here. So how we, <coughs> for example, a match uh, a content state, we initialize it like this. Uh, for if a match is live and the score is 0, 0, and the match minute is 17, for example, the content state will look like this. And then we use the uh, Swift JSON encoder. It will encode this struct into a JSON like something on the right. So this is the payload that we're going to use to update the live activity. All right, now we have the payload. Uh, we need the push token. Push token quite easy as well. This is how you start li uh, live activity. Try await activity dot request. You pass in the attributes, which are the static data, the content, which is live data, and you want the push type as token. You, and then you, you indicate that you want a token, push token. Uh, so after the, the uh, live activity started, you will get the live activity instance. And live activity instance will have a sync stream that gives you push notifications. And you have to have a task and a for loop to wait for that. Uh, something to note here that Apple says that you, the push notification can update, uh, the token can update during the life cycle. So if you get a new one, you need to upload a new one. But in practice, we haven't experienced that. Like it was always just one token. But it's always good to, to handle that case since Apple said it could happen. And here to note that it's very different from the device tokens for normal pushes. Each live activity has their own token. Compared to before, each, have, each app just have one token, and you use that token to send everything. Live activities are basically treated as like individual apps, so each live activity has their own, own token. And the token format is a bit, little bit different. It's much longer, uh, but you use it in the same way. Yeah. And all right, so we will test sending push notifications using command line. This is um, some, yeah, just some basic code. You need to set up uh, APNS topic, which is for the .push type .live activity, And you set the push type to live activity. Then you use the, uh, you generate the token from the developer portal and the body, which is the payload that we prepared. And we try to send it. And usually you will get this. We are complete upload and find 200. Like, this is good, right? It seems everything is working. But of course, on your phone, nothing will happen. And you say, well, let's try it again. Send again, 200, and nothing happens. And you send three more times, still nothing happens. So what actually happened here? We need to debug it. 
But uh, as I said before, live activity runs in separate processes. You cannot attach a debugger. Uh, you cannot get any error messages. Then how do we do this? So there's an app on your MacBook. It's called Console App. You go in there, you touch your phone, and then start streaming. Then you'll get like, I don't know, 100 logs per second. Like, it, like And how do you find stuff in there? We found out you search for this keyword, chrono-d. Uh, but why this keyword? Uh, eventually, we found out, OK, this is the system, system process that handles the, the, uh, the widgets, all the widgets. But yeah, you just have to search for this one. And then you will limit down to probably just a few hundred uh, logs. And then you manually look inside. And then maybe you will some, find something interesting, which is not code highlighted, but I will highlight for you. Uh, it gives an error. No value associated with key, coding keys. So if you have worked with uh, JSON encoders, with JSON encoder decoders, this is probably will be familiar with you. This means that uh, there's a mismatch in the JSON uh, to your Swift struct. So what happened here? Um, system uses the J uh, Swift JSON decoder with default strategies, which means, um, for example, the content state we define as camel case, S as a uh, larger case, and then it will convert to snake case on the right. Uh, but on the content state on the right, it's using a dash. So like these kind of small things, if you're, you didn't know this, and you use uh, both underscores or both dashes, then your push payload, Apple, uh, the system will think it is not invalid. It's not valid. So it will decode will fail, and it will just, OK, this is invalid data, throw it away. And yeah. That's it. And your live activity doesn't update. Uh, we spent a lot of time to, to figure this out. So yeah, this is um, yeah, something that uh, yeah, spent a lot of time. Uh, secondly, a weird stuff, the timestamp. Uh, when testing, we'll send a lot of pushes, of course, and we change the content state. Uh, we, like we bump the number to like 17 minutes, 18 minutes, 13 minutes. And then we keep sending it, and sometimes it just uh, doesn't update because we forgot to update the timestamp. So apparently, the system considers this timestamp. If, even if the content state is um, different, if the timestamp is uh, the same, you will see, OK, this is nothing new. Just throw it away. And then you will not update again. So something to take note of as well. Uh, all right. Lastly, the update frequency. This is something that we did not expect at all. Uh, how often do we want to update the live activity? Uh, the score trains we want to update. Uh, for the latest event, there's something scored, so the red card, we want to update. And then the match, match clock, we want to update as well, right? We want to know which time the match, match is right now. How do we update it? There should be, we thought there's, OK, there's a Swift UI uh, API for this, right? You give time interval, you set the click update, you set the countdown to false, and you should count up. Since uh, football matches should be quite simple, since the clock doesn't ne never stop, it should use a timer and just continue update. Uh, but no, it doesn't work that way. Here's a screen recording on how it works. Uh, when I start playing, the, the timer will start to count up. And when you lock the screen, it will start uh, continuing counting for a few seconds. It will pause completely. And then after a few while, you unlock it, it jumps to a current minute. So this is how it looks. Three seconds, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then when you lock it, it jumps to 10. So this is not great for a live activity. Um, it's even crazier on, pre on some versions. When it's unlocked, it shows the, match, uh, the minute like this. And you lock it, it turns to one minute. And the voice is so different, like it will break, like break everything. And this is not what we want. So of course, we uh, file the radar. Um, we want this. Uh, your system timer has it, like, right? Give it to us. We want to use that as well. Um, also. We want to have uh, custom formatting, but we want to use the attach free uh, because this is how we show the time in the app. Uh, we want to have a consistency within uh, live activity in our apps. Um, this is never updated. The radar is still there. But fortunately, we have an Apple, Apple contact, uh, and we ask them, OK, we, we want this feature. Is it possible? Did they, can you ask the engineering team, like, how do you work around it? Uh, this is our reply. Um, I can tell you our guidance would be to send regular pushes to update your live activity. What this means, every time you want to update the match clock, like seven minutes, eight minutes, you send a push, which means 
Uh, football match is 90 minutes. You said 90 push, 90 pushes per li a live activity uh, per match. If the user follows five live activities, you've uh, nine, 90 times five, so 450 pushes. Um, this is the official response from Apple. So uh, you can imagine that uh, our backend guys are super happy with this. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is what it is. Well, we have to deal with it. So super unexpected, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, final stuff, we have some un unexpected bonus that user seems to really, really like, like live activities. When you run our ads, uh, unfortunately, we have to run ads to, to get new users. Uh, once every time we have live activity in our screenshots, the click-through rate is just super high, and the user retention is just super high. So this is completely uh, unexpected, but uh, really good stuff for us. All right, um, this is all I have for today. So yeah, thank you for your attention. Okay, that's all.